Hello, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at how you can use velocity, side chaining, and ghost notes to make your drums less robotic and give them more bounce and groove. We'll look at how to use these ideas at two different tempos, 90 beats per minute and 120 beats per minute. Velocity is a parameter of MIDI that lets us emulate how a drummer hits the different pieces of the drum kit. Alternating between louder and quieter hits is what gives drums dynamics and creates groove. When a drum pattern has no variation in velocity, it tends to sound robotic. When programming MIDI, the velocity channel has a range from 0 to 127, 0 being the quietest and 127 being the loudest. For our pattern, we will use two different velocity layers, the downbeat at a velocity of 100 and the upbeat at a velocity slightly quieter at 70. By alternating between these two velocity layers, we avoid the robotic sound and it starts to feel a bit more human. On a micro level, this also creates a type of call and response, the higher velocity being the call and the lower velocity being the response. Velocity is not restricted to drum sounds. You can apply this same idea to leads, keyboards, basses, and it will make all of those sounds more dynamic, expressive, and lifelike. So far, we've been in this void of 16th notes. We need an anchor. The fastest way to put rhythm into a groove is using the backbeat. The backbeat is beats 2 and 4, and is the answer to the downbeat, beats 1 and 3. Chances are you've used velocity in one context or another. This next technique is a little less common. Sidechain compression. We've all heard the classic techno effect where you modulate the volume of a synth bass by using the kick to create a pumping effect. We'll use the same idea, but we'll modulate the volume of the hi-hats using the rim or snare audio. First, we'll need compressor. You can add audio effects to individual drum rack chains by dropping them onto the drum pad. Switch to transfer curve view. Click the triangle to display the sidechain settings. Turn on sidechain and set audio from to drums, rim pre-effects. Change the rim gain to 14 decibels. Turn off EQ. Now set the threshold to negative 48 decibels. Listen to how with each rim hit, the hi-hat dips in volume and then smoothly rises back up. Set attack to 30 milliseconds and the release to 280 milliseconds. This makes the effect smoother. Set the ratio to 8 to 1. Let's listen to just the hi-hat audio. Alright, before we build any more of this drum pattern, we need to get a keyboard part going. Let's go with this. Okay, now that we've got our keyboard part, let's keep developing the drum pattern. A sensitive drummer will listen to the other parts of the track or the band and emphasize the significant rhythms. For this idea, those would be here. Let's put kick drums at those points. Now we will use that same sidechain compression technique, but we'll use the kick drum audio to modulate the volume of the hi-hats. Set audio from to drums, kick pre-effects. Set the threshold to negative 40 decibels.
set attack to 15 milliseconds. And release to 250 milliseconds. Set the ratio to 8 to 1. Here's the hi-hat audio on its own. Now the kick and rim push down the hi-hat volume with each hit, making it bounce up and down throughout the phrase. The final element of this drum pattern are the ghost notes. Ghost notes usually come right before or right after the main notes and are meant to be felt more than heard, so set them to lower velocities. We'll start with the kick drum ghost notes. Now we'll do the same thing with the rim ghost notes, making sure to set all of these to lower velocities. For a final touch, we'll add a snare fill at the end of the loop. It's built with two 32nd notes and then two 16th notes. The behavior of the sidechain effect changes at different tempos. Let's go up to the house tempo, 120 beats per minute. The hi-hats are getting eaten up a bit now that the kicks are faster and more frequent. Adjust the thresholds of the kick and rim sidechain compressors to lessen the effect on the hi-hats. Set the kick threshold to negative 25 decibels. and set the rim threshold to negative 35 decibels. The whole point of getting your drums to have a dynamic motion, a bounce, a groove, is to make it so that whatever elements you put on top really shine, like a vocal or a lead synth. I hope you found this useful. If you'd like to download this project file, you can do so on my Patreon. And if you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one session, I offer lessons over Zoom. You can find the links and info in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.